is it allows the computer to execute a piece of code over and over and over again until a certain condition is met. So when we're giving instructions to the computer, we can tell it to do something a hundred times, we can tell it to do it a thousand times, a million times or billion t billions of times depending on how much uh, computational power you have in your computer. And this really gives the programmer a lot of horsepower, right? And sort of is very useful for automating things and making things happen on their own. So let's practice this concept. I've created a uh, project already, which we've been working with, uh, prereq practice. Let's create another package in here, and I'm going to call this package um, practice.loops. And in here, let's create another class. I'll call it loops practice. And again, we're going to need the main method, right? Every program needs a starting point, so we need to define the main method, right? So again, a loop is exactly what it sounds like. It's a way to do things over and over and over again until a certain condition is met. And the first kind of loop we're going to look at is called the while loop. And what that says is while something is true, do something, right? While uh, whatever is in these brackets, while that equals true, do something. So if I do sys out and I'm going to just print out my name here, this will always run, okay? Until my computer crashes, uh, this will continue to run. Let me hit play and notice that it's going to continue to print out my name um, because this will always evaluate to true, okay? Let me end this before my computer crashes. Let's go over another example. Let's say we want to print out my name a uh, hundred times. I'm going to define a variable of type int. We'll call that variable count and I'm assigning the initial value to be zero. And what I'm going to do in these brackets is I'm going to put a condition in here that while this is true, execute this. So I'm going to say while count is less than or equal to 100, print my name. So take a guess as to what's going to happen when I hit the play button. Let's hit play. And notice that it's continuing to print out my name over and over and over again, way past the 100 mark. So let's end that right there. And what, what the, the problem with this is that we're not changing the value of count, all right? The value of count was initially set to zero, and then we just put this condition in here, which will evaluate to true every single time. So we need to change the value of count for this loop to naturally end. And the way we do this is we can say count is equal to count plus one, okay? And what this is doing is basically taking the current value of count, so in the first loop it, the value was zero, um, it takes that zero, adds a one to it, and then assigns it back to the same variable count, and then this variable is then tested in this condition, one is less than 100, then we do this, it goes to 2, uh, 2 is less than or equal to 100, it does this again, 3, all the way up to 100. Where when 100 is less than or equal to 100, uh, this condition evaluates to true. And then at the 100th value of count, when it gets to here, it's going to say count uh, 100 plus 1 is 101. Right? So this value is going to get to 101, it's going to try to put that back into this test, and it's going to fail this test, right? This condition is not going to pass, so this will basically evaluate to false, right? 101 is not less than or equal to 100, so then it will not execute what's in here, and it's just basically going to break out of that loop and continue to execute code, whatever uh, follows this particular loop. So in general, this is the structure of a while loop, right? There's a test within the bracket which either evaluates to true or false, and uh, based on that, the body is then executed, right? If it's true, only if it's true, the body is executed. So let me concatenate to this string the value of this uh, count variable, all right? And I'm going to just put a colon here with a space so that it gets printed in a more reader-friendly fashion. So when I run this, it's basically going to print out from 0 to 100 uh, with my name. So let me hit the play button and notice that it stopped at 100. So just like in the previous lesson, I spoke to you about the exclamation point, 
right, which is the negation operator or the not operator, we can apply that here as well. So this is the condition. And within here, I can put a not and then surround the condition within a set of brackets like that, or parentheses rather. So this basically uh, exclamation point, or also referred to as the bang, we saw this in the previous lesson, negates whatever's in this condition, all right? So in this case, it's saying count is less than or equal to 100. When we add this not before it, it basically reads as count is not less than or equal to 100, okay? And we're basically testing for whether this is true and only then execute this. So take a guess as to what's gonna happen when I hit the play button now uh, that we have this uh, exclamation point here. Nothing's gonna get printed. I just hit play and nothing got printed here because this will not evaluate to true, all right? Um, count is, less, is equal to zero and in this condition, yes, count is less than or equal to 100, but it's surrounded by another condition with this not. And so uh, this while uh, test is actually false and anything in this brackets are not gonna get executed. Let me change it back to the way it was. I'm gonna get rid of this negation operator. Get rid of the extra parentheses there. And I'm going to talk about terminating a loop early. All right, so this line basically provides for a natural way for this loop to eventually end, right? When count reaches 101, this loop will not execute any further. We'll just basically break out of it. But sometimes there are situations where we need to break out of a loop prematurely based on some condition. And the way that is done is by using the break statement. So if I put in a break here, all right, it's good. this is gonna terminate the loop prematurely. Uh, let me hit the play button and see what happens. All right, notice that we only get one thing printed out. Um, when the count was zero, it succeeded this condition. It moved here. It added, uh, it incremented a zero by one and this was one. It moved to the next line and it sees a break here. So it doesn't actually go back and start the loop again. It does not do that. It just breaks out of this entire block because of this break condition. And oftentimes this is useful when you want to put a condition within this loop uh, and if that condition succeeds or fails, depending on how you're coding it, um, you want the loop to uh, terminate prematurely. So for example, if I was to add an if block in here, and you've seen if statements, we used some of them before, if the count is equal to, let's say 30, all right? Um, sorry, there needs to be two um, equal statements there. If count is equal to 30, we, we want to basically break out of this loop the way it is showing right here. So let's play this and notice that it only prints up to 29 because when it was at 30, right, we didn't get an opportunity to put 30 in here and uh, print the 30th uh, number, right? So as soon as count was 30, we basically just bro broke out of the loop and the loop was terminated. All right, so overall we've covered so far the while loop syntax. The next thing we're gonna look at is for loop. But before that, we have to practice some of these concepts. Uh, we've covered the index of method, we've kind of covered uh, car at and substring, and now you've seen the while loop. So let's combine all that together into an assignment before we move on to uh, for loops. So what your task is to create a method that will extract part of a string, and I'll give you the instructions right here. Um, let me just to clear the screen here, let me get rid of all that stuff. And uh, remember, this is the class. In here, we have the main method. Outside of this main method, define another method. We'll call it public. Just, just copy as I'm writing this. I'm gonna define a new method, public static void print categories. And it accepts a string as an argument. And your task is to complete the body of this method. And the requirement is, uh, let me just put comments here. The instructions are to extract all categories from the string argument. 
Okay, so we're going to pass in a text um, containing a bunch of categories, and your job will be to basically print that after you extract it. And the sentence or the, the string that will go into this method is the following. I'm just going to paste that in here, and I'm going to assign this to the string variable. Don't forget the semicolon at the end. So again, these strings are basically being concatenated together with the plus sign, and we're assigning it to this. And what we're going to do is we're going to call we're going to call the uh, print categories method by passing in this particular string. So inside of this long text, there are little category sections, as you can see right here: category colon furniture, category colon makeup and category co uh, colon apparel. And your task is to write code to find and print all of the categories in this string. And you pretty much know everything you need to up until this point to be able to solve this problem. It's going to require you to use the substring method as well as the index of method. And you will also need to use uh, a while loop. One thing I forgot to mention um, earlier, and that was that the index of method if for some reason it does not find the particular target string that you're looking for, then it returns a negative uh, index value. Okay, so remember index of would return the index where a particular string occurred, and if it doesn't find it, it returns uh, a negative one, a negative index. So notice in this example we have a variable called saying, and uh, it stores a string too good to be true, and we're uh, applying the index of uh, method on this saying, and we're searching for uh, hello. And of course, it doesn't exist in there, so it returns a negative one. So keep that in mind because you actually might need that uh, for this particular exercise. All right, so try this assignment out, and if you get stuck, try to push through it and really try to figure it out on your own. And that's really the exercise that you're going to get. It doesn't matter if your solution is wrong or if it doesn't work exactly 100%, the more problems you practice in the course, the much better off you'll be. And you'll see that something like this uh, would seem quite trivial later on in the course when you've achieved enough practice. Okay, so definitely please try this out on your own first before watching the solution video. So you can pause the video at this moment and uh, play it when you're ready to watch the solution. Okay, so I, I hope you had a chance to practice that, and uh, if you got it right, that's great. If you didn't, that's still okay. We're going to go over the solution. And for those of you that are um, slightly more experienced programmers, you may have thought of using the for loop or some other kind of a mechanism, but I sort of restricted this assignment for you to use only the while loop, as well as the index of method and the substring, so that you get practice on those particular concepts that we've covered so far. So again, we're going to be searching through this string for uh, components such as category colon makeup, uh, category colon furniture, and category colon apparel, and basically print out these particular categories, just the makeup part, just the apparel, and uh, just the furniture is what we want to print out here. So let's get started. I'm going to define a variable of type int, and this is just going to be basically uh, an index um, incrementer and we're going to have the while loop here while true we want to do something so first i want to store the index position of where a particular string is found so i'm going to create another variable in here called found and it's going to be assigned the index position of where we first see the word category colon apparel or category colon whatever so wherever we see category colon first within this string it's going to be assigned to found and uh, we're going to be changing where category is found within the string uh, through this loop so let me show you how we can do that so string dot index of okay and the string the particular string that we're looking for is category colon i so right from the start you can notice that we're using i here right now i is zero okay but if we want to loop through this string 
uh, we want to be incrementing i and, and we'll do that later on in this loop. So what is this saying? It's saying that we want the first occurrence of category um, uh, and we want to find out what that index number is, right? So we store that in found, then we move on to um, if, because we need a way to break out of this loop. And the way we can do that is if found is equal to negative one, right? That means we did not find any more categories in this string. We can just break out of here. And the next thing we want is the starting position of where to extract the actual string that we're looking for. All right, and that's gonna be followed by a category colon, okay? So um, we want apparel, we want makeup, we want furniture. So we want the index position of the first character in that particular item. Let me show you how to do that. So int start is equal to found plus nine, okay? And this is the start of the actual string that we're looking for, actual uh, category. The start position is gonna give us A for apparel, it's gonna give us F for furniture, and M for makeup. That's what this is gonna give us, okay? Again, found would be the first index of uh, the word category, okay? And then we add nine to that. So that's gonna be um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is the colon, and then the ninth would be the starting position, which would be the A for the apparel, F for the, for the furniture, and M for the makeup, all right? Hopefully that, that's making sense so far. Next, we wanna find out where uh, the particular category item ends, okay? So we wanna look for where the apparel is has ended, and that's basically this space, all right? When we see makeup and then we see a space, we know that makeup has ended, we know furniture has ended. And I'm gonna name that uh, variable end, it's going to be, of course, of type integer because we are doing the index of method. Index of. And I'm going to look for a space. And the from index is, of course, start. So the second argument is basically the index position, the starting point for where we want to look for this particular string. And now we can print out this the substring of start and end, okay? String dot substring. The beginning index is going to be start, and the ending index is going to be end. Now, if I run what we have so far, it's only going to print out the apparel item, and it's going to do that over and over and over again, and this loop will never really end because it will always find the word category, and it will always just print out the first occurrence. Um, which is apparel, and we need a way to increment i. Um, so let's see what happens when we run this. Uh, it's only printing apparel, of course, because that's the only first category it found. And of course, this this loop is going to run forever because it's in a it's always going to be true. We need a way to break. And I did put that. I said if found is negative one, then break out of here. But found will never be negative one because it always finds the first category. So we need a way to sort of traverse or, or, or move forward in this string. So the way we're gonna do that is, I'm gonna say i is equal to end plus one. Okay, so once we find the end of a particular category item, we need to move on to the next occurrence of, of the, you know, the category. And then the same thing happens. So now if I run this, it's working as expected. It finds the apparel, then it moves on to makeup, and then it moves on to furniture, all right? So hopefully uh, you were able to solve this on your own, and if you weren't, that's totally fine. The more problems you do like this, the more you work out the solution on your own, even if it's wrong, you'll eventually start to get it right. This lesson is already quite long, so we'll take a look at for loops in the next lesson.